I wanted to talk today about Nephi and Isaiah. I really don't feel that I can talk about Nephi's message too much. It's, it's amazing what Nephi wrote, and yet, at the same time, it's so sad that so few members of the church today understand why Nephi put the Isaiah chapters into his writings, because <clears throat> they really don't understand what Nephi's writings represent. <clears throat> you know, keep in mind that when Christ came to the Nephites, he commanded them to study the words of Isaiah. And <clears throat> you know, most of us really haven't taken him up on that. And in addition to studying the words of Isaiah, he gave us a special message from his father that he also commanded us to study. Uh, in fact, when he was just beginning that message to the Nephites, he stopped and he said, hey, I see that you are tired. I've been talking to you about a lot of things today and you can't, you can't understand. You're not in a position to understand what the Father has commanded me to share with you at this time. So I want you to go home, pray that the Father will strengthen you and help you to understand this message. Now, the Lord isn't only talking to the Nephites there, he's talking to us. And this gets to the crux of why Nephi wrote the things that he wrote. Because Nephi was not writing a journal. Um, first and second Nephi, it's, it's clear, it's plain from the text that um, this book was written at the end of Nephi's life. He, had, he talks about other plates that he had written, you know, a detailed history of his people. But these plates, he was specifically commanded of the Lord to share something special. And in the last chapter of his writings, he says, hey, Gentiles, the day is going to come where you and I will stand together before the judgment bar of God and you will know that Christ commanded me to write these things, and you will know that they are true. So Nephi was commanded to write the things that he wrote, and we were commanded to study them. But, you know, most of us, we we could do a better job uh, at doing that. And and that is the, the whole point and purpose of my new book, which is called uh, Delight in Plainness, uh, Nephi and Isaiah. Now, it's important to understand that, you know, Nephi, he's trying to tell us something, something very, very important. And one of the basic messages of his writings was that God is the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he wants to teach his children if we will seek to be taught by him. And this message is from the very first book, uh, very first chapter in his writings to the end of his book. You know, I, Nephi, being born of goodly parents. <clears throat> then he talks about how he was taught somewhat after the learning um, of his father. Now that's, that's interesting because at the time that Nephi left Jerusalem, he was probably only 14 years old. Nephi, or, uh, Laman and Lemuel were uh, Lehi and uh, sorry, his oldest children. We got some uh, some noisy little uh, geese out there on the lake. <clears throat> um, but you know they weren't they weren't married yet. Um, Langman was probably no more than twenty, which means Lehi was probably no more than uh, forty, and uh, Sariah was probably in her thirties. <clears throat> I was probably I'm probably older than Lehi was when he left Jerusalem. Now, <clears throat> you know, Lehi. He's, he's told in a vision that he needs to leave. And that takes his family off guard. They don't want to leave. Um, and as you can imagine, if Nephi was 14, I mean, he said that he was exceedingly young, yet large in stature, which means, you know, he probably just recently went through puberty. And, you know, kids go through puberty between... Uh, you know, 10 and 14 years old. So he's exceedingly young in his own words. And yet when his father tells him, hey, we're leaving, 
and everything you know you're gonna leave behind all of your friends <clears throat> um, we gotta we gotta go so the Lord told me about this in the dream and Nephi was upset and you know so were all of his uh, his entire family was upset but remember the first verse Nephi said that he was taught somewhat after all the learning of his father so where did Nephi get his other knowledge from well he goes on to say that he had a great knowledge of the mysteries of God so Nephi learned early on that he could go to the Lord and that the Lord would be his teacher his father would guide him and lead him but he did not consider his father as his primary source of knowledge he considered the Lord as his primary source and that's what he did as a 14 year old boy he went and prayed to the Lord and in his own writings he said that uh, the Lord softened his heart and that he from that point forward did not rebel against his father like his brothers were doing and that was you know the beginning of an incredible learning experience for Nephi and he goes on and learns directly from the from the Lord throughout the course of his life. Um, the Lord tells him, hey, now when you start this record that I'm commanding you to write, I want you to first summarize the writings of your father. And so that's what Nephi does. And if you, in the very first chapter of Nephi, first Nephi. Nephi says, I am, uh, I'm going to start this by abridging the record of my father, and then I will proceed to give an account of my own days. And so the, the events from first Nephi chapter one through first Nephi chapter eight are all from his father's record. <clears throat> and Nephi concluded his father's record by talking about the vision of the tree of life which his father had and this is really interesting because when Nephi heard his father tell him about that vision he that's what that's how he starts his record so first Nephi chapter 9 it's really very similar to that's that's the division between Nephi's abridgment of his father's writings and his own and it's really like the words of Mormon, you know, serving as the uh, uh, joining those two records. If you if you read First Nephi chapter nine, I think it's only six verses or so. Uh, you'll see that <clears throat> he explains the the plates and things in, in the very same way that uh, Mormon does. Now, then in verse ten or chapter ten, Nephi starts talking about how he wanted to see the vision of his father and that he knew the Lord could do that and he explains to us that hey the Lord is the same he's he's no respecter of persons if he's if he'll teach my father about something he'll teach me about it and he'll teach you about it you just need to ask and if you ask and if you seek you shall find and if you don't you won't you you will be left to perish in the dark he he says that uh, not in chapter 10 but he says that I, I believe in uh, Second uh, Nephi chapter 32, where he's he's concluding his records and saying, "Hey, you know, after I've written all of these things, if you don't understand this, it's because you don't ask the Lord. And if you won't ask the Lord to understand why He's commanded me to write all of these things, I said, I mourn for you, because these things were given to you to help you prepare for what's coming. And if you will choose to ignore this tender mercy which the Lord has given to you," you're going to perish in the dark. Now, those are some really strong words for Nephi to use to conclude his record. So what does Nephi write about? Well, after he explains to us the importance of seeking to be taught by the Lord himself, he goes into his vision um, of the tree of life. And he, he starts his vision in a different way than his father. His father's vision, you know, they're seeing the same things, um, but Lehi starts out and he's in this lone and dreary, dreary world. And he's walking around for hours in, in mists of darkness, which 
we are told represent you know Satan's power to tempt and to blind and deceive the the people on this planet <clears throat> but that's not how Nephi's record starts Nephi starts from the perspective of Jesus Christ and Mary and the love of God and then I mean he briefly touches on some of the things that his father saw but he's really more focused on you know the meanings of everything and he goes through and uh, and explains to us that hey Christ is going to come and and minister to my seed and when he does come he's going to give my seed some very plain and precious truths and those truths will be of great benefit to the Gentiles if the Gentiles will use them what Nephi was talking about was Jesus Christ's message from the Father which is really spoken of in detail in 3rd Nephi chapter 15 through the first four verses of chapter 17 and then kicking up in 3rd uh, Nephi chapter 20 um, and going from there and it is an incredible message that most people have no idea about what it means and it's it's sad but the the meaning of that message is the same as the meaning of all of the Isaiah chapters which Nephi transcribed into his writings <clears throat> now Nephi saw that the pilgrims were going to arrive to America and they were going to have this Bible and he knew that it contained the writings of the Jews so yeah he knew that Isaiah was in there but at the same time he was told you know Nephi you're gonna see a lot in this vision but you are not going to be able to write about all of it there's other people that the Lord commissioned to write about these things and we learned that Isaiah was one of those because the very first chapter after Nephi um, shares this vision he starts talking about Isaiah and he's also told that John, uh, one of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, would write about these things. But Nephi didn't have access to John's writings. John wouldn't be born for another 600 years or so. So he used Isaiah. Now, when Isaiah, you know, Isaiah's revelations, as recorded in the brass plates, are not broken up into chapters and verses. And the chapters and verses that we find in the Bible are a relatively modern creation. I mean, I believe it's around the 1400s. Um, and so <clears throat> when Nephi is putting in a revelation and talking about a revelation from Isaiah, it's an entire revelation. But our chapters and verses kind of break things up and make it harder for us to understand these things because the way most of us read the Book of Mormon, unfortunately, is chapter by chapter. And so <clears throat> I have really made an effort in my book to analyze Isaiah's revelations as an entire revelation and not you know, as a chapter by chapter. So, so the first two chapters that uh, of Isaiah that Nephi includes within his writings uh, comprise a single revelation and there it's an amazing revelation but you need to read it together to understand hey this is all the same thing and it, for that matter first and second Nephi that's an artificial um, creation it's it's really just you know the the record of Nephi there is no first and second Nephi when he wrote it so when you break the, his writings up like that, the message becomes a little disjointed and it makes it more difficult for us to understand it. But in my book, one of the things that I do is go through chapter, not uh, revelation by revelation, and it really makes a difference to you know, be able to understand what uh, Nephi is talking about. Now, one of the wonderful things that I've taken away from Nephi's writings was just how humble Nephi was. <clears throat> in 2nd Nephi chapter 4, Nephi is just in awe of the things that the Lord has showed him. He, he talks about how the Lord took him in the spirit to an exceedingly high mountain upon which he'd never before set foot. 
and showed him this incredible vision of the tree of life. And yet, despite having seen such marvelous things, Nephi continually laments because of his own weakness and the fact that Satan tempts him and he gives in to those temptations, you know, rather easily. And he, he mourns that fact. So, I mean, Nephi is a regular guy. He's just like us. And the difference is he would go to the Lord and he wanted to be taught by the Lord directly. <clears throat> so I think that one of the takeaways from Nephi's writings is we've all been given spiritual gifts. And what are we doing with those gifts? Nephi's gifts were to enable us to be able to understand and to prosper in the last days because he was writing to us, the Gentiles. He was not writing to the people of his day. So we really need to understand why he did what he did. And, you know, I, I think that if you will take the time and the effort to study these things out, then you will be amazed. Um, the revelations that Isaiah received all have to do with the last days and the restoration of the house of Israel. And if you do not understand the covenants and promises that the Lord has made with regards to the house of Israel, you are utterly unprepared for what's about to happen. And that's what the Isaiah chapters are about. They're to prepare us for what is coming. Yeah, our living prophet has told us, hey, <clears throat> study the covenants and promises the Lord has made with the house of Israel. And if you do, you'll be astounded. There is no better way to understand those covenants and promises than to do what Jesus Christ commanded us to do, and that is to study the words of Isaiah. And if you will take that challenge up, then your eyes will be opened. But if you do not, you they won't. And you will be shocked out of your mind when these things begin to happen. So I'm I'm excited for this for this book. Um, it's I've never seen anything else like it, um, and I I hope that if you are interested in understanding more about Isaiah, that uh, that it will be a resource and a blessing in your life. All right, um, I think that's enough for today. Uh, until next time, God bless.